Hey, Karen, how are you? Hey, Steve. Hey, I'm good. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good. I'm over here in uh, in Montreal. I was, we had a very Must be early. It's very early, and we've had a, yeah. a dump of snow overnight. Oh, so um, yeah, it's feeling very uh, very wintry over here, which probably <laughs> is where you are too, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have snow right now. The sun is shining, but I bet it's super cold actually outside. Anyway, like I think the 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 wind is really cold. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay so I inside. usually I usually start off these conversations saying. How are you? That's just a natural introduction, right? Yes. But after listening to your album, I feel I really want to say, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm like today, you know, yesterday I got my booster. So I'm feeling a little just like tired. Okay. <laughs> but besides that, I'm good. Like I'm really excited to put out this album in two weeks. And because as you say, like it's a really personal album, uh, and it just feels so good to be sharing it with the world. So the album's called Motor Drone, and, and I think we all know about how that title came about now, and it touches on a lot of things like anxiety and feeling, um, you know, like you're in, in a bit of a cycle of things that you can't break out of. Mm, yeah. So that's obviously a very personal subject, and there's a lot of personal um, elements to this album, is there ever a time when you're writing and you think, no, this is this is too personal. I don't think I want to I want to put this out there. I mean, I think in the beginning I was pretty scared about talking about it for some reason. Maybe also just because it's one of those things where it's like I know that so many people go through things that are much worse than what I've been going through. And so in a way I didn't want it to seem like I was like whining or something. I don't know. Not I mean. I mean, it's totally fine to whine, but like it, it was just difficult for, for me to s- get started on writing on it because obviously it was just so so scary, like to experiencing panic attack, even though it's a fairly normal thing. It's just when you experience that for the first time, like it, it feels so scary. Like I never tried being out of control of my brain, I guess. And, and so it did feel scary to start to write about it, but I did, I then found like really writing these songs, it just made me, it made it all feel less scary and it made me understand why it had happened much better. So in that way, even though there is many songs that is a bit like, you know, dealing with some 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 very personal stuff, it, it was actually like a really, just a, a really important and really great experience for me to write this album. Yeah, so it feels cathartic for you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what that, that word means, to be honest, cathartic, but it means like, it's like a release, right? Like a, like a. Yeah. Like, I think it's like a, a way of working through your feelings and right. coming, coming out in a more positive place than where you went in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's cathedral. <laughs> so when you're, when people are listening to this album, your fans are listening to this album, obviously you're kind of spilling your guts a little bit on your feelings. What do you want them to feel when they listen to it? I mean, what I really hope is uh, is that some people will listen to it and that they can attach themselves to some of the themes or to some of the, even just some of the lines, you know, like, because that's what I, as a listener, always am looking for in music is something to like attach myself to and like to give me inspiration or hope or feel community or something. Um, I, I was listening like this year I've been listening a lot to Girl in Red's album and like there's this song uh, like there's a couple of the songs where it's just like there's these lines that are just really I can really relate and it just lifts me up so much to listen to that and so obviously you know even though no one's life is the same but I still hope that someone will listen to it and and find 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 uh, community or like sense of hope or like inspiration i don't know Something yeah well, i think like i think a lot of the songs are definitely going to help people through through bad times and that must be really fulfilling for you as an artist yeah um, yeah i hope so yeah yeah i've heard you mention that this is a new chapter for you can yeah, you remember like that. yeah can you remember a catalyst moment where you felt this new chapter began i think it was especially it, it was during goose Goosebumps and also Live to Survive, I felt this feeling the most like because Goosebumps was the first song that I intentionally wrote for this album. And it it was the first time that I was trying to put words to 
how I was feeling and what I was going through. And I could just feel the moment that I started writing about it, that it felt very, very far away from Forever Neverland and some of the, like, some of the singles I'd been doing around the time when I was just sort of like running around in the hamster wheel, you know? And, and again, not that that was a bad thing. It was just, it just felt like such a different time, you know, all of a sudden, like, you know, it really felt like I'd been like flying up here, like, woo! And then it was like, doof, you know, and then riding goosebumps felt like me starting from down here to just slowly pick myself up, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And so, so that was the first time that I felt that, okay, it's a new chapter and it's starting approximately now. Um, and then with Live to Survive, that was a bit different because for that one, it was like, that, that was the first time that this kind of sadness turned into more of like a power or like aggression or like an energy, you know? Um, so that was also a part in, like important part of my own kind of journey with this album. Yeah. There's definitely a darker element to this album compared to what you've done before. Yeah. Do you, when you're, when you're writing an album that, that has that kind of shift, do you ever yeah. think about how it's going to be, it's going to fit into your live show, you know, and sit yes. next to the old songs? Yeah, I am. And I mean, you're right. Cause it's always like, of course. And I mean, I'm working with my musical director right now to like find a good balance because there are many of the songs from before, obviously that I want to play, but it's that thing about making it fit with these new ones. Um, Cause I'm actually, I'm, I'm like super excited to play these new songs live because I personally really like sort of like very dark and energetic live shows. Like, you know, cause I used to, you know I come from the, the, the punk scene and I used to always go to all these local punk shows and stuff. So I really love when it's like, when, when it has like a darkness and an aggression but also like energy and hope, you know? Nice. So, so, so that, 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 that's one of the things I really am excited about for this album and I think it's 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 a matter of like because also I stand stand by the music that I did before as well even though it's you know even though I do know that it is quite different some of it but I think there's a way to to um, to balance it all so that it feels like also because it all goes along though it's part of the same journey like mm -hmm. this, this you know Forever Neverland was was also the reason why I came to the the point that I am now in a way so. I think it's just about being smart about the arc of the of the set list. I think. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. Yeah. <laughs> um, now you touched about you touched on the fact that you you're a big punk fan from your teenage years. Yeah. Do you think that that element of your musical journey kind of plays into the sound that you made now? I think definitely with this album, I just had more time to really dig into myself and really and really just ask myself what I really think sounds cool, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. and, and I think so I had more time to dig into that. And I think you're right. I think it's always actually, even in the times where I was doing more of like a more pop electronic kind of thing, like I've always just really loved dark synths and guitars like that. that I just love that. And so I think with this one, I, I thought I really just should explore that some more again. Yeah. Um, and I love also, I love making pop music that has like a little bit of a, a, a punkish energy in lack of a better word, but you know, like a rawness to it. So those were some of the thoughts that I had. In my so, so when you think about back to that part of your life, your, mm -hmm. I guess your teenage years and maybe yeah. your early twenties, yeah. is, is there an album that really represents that time for you? Mm, I don't know if there's, well, I mean, I was a really, really big Sonic Youth fan and uh, Kim Gordon in particular was just a really big role model for me. I, I just thought everything they did was, was amazing and so magical and so political and so badass and simple, but also had a really like, like, like society critic, you know, and, and I, you know, I, so I think, I, I guess Washing Machine and, and Goo was like two albums that meant a lot to me. And then also um, uh, the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Amazing. I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, but oh, fine. there it is. Fine copy. No way. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You're so lucky. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, man. Sorry. Uh, carry on. Yeah. Yeah. No. Fuck. Yeah. So cool. Um, well, the Yeah, Yeah, Yes, Fever to Tell was also... Again, Karen O was also really someone that I just aspired to, you know, and, and found inspiration 
um, in, uh, yeah, th those were, were some of the, the bands that I was really, really into in my teen years. Yeah. And then I, I know that you've covered Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. Oh, I love, yes. Love and then you Smashing put your own spin on that. Do you know if they've heard that song? No, I don't. I don't. I wonder what no. they would think of it because you, you obviously put your own spin on it. Yeah. So when you when you cover other pe other artists, is it is mm. it really important that you kind of put make your put your own mark on it? Yeah. I mean, I think that's super important. I think I guess that's one of the reasons why one become an artist is to show who you are through a creative outlet. So so I think it is that means everything. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes you fail, you know, and that's fine. At least like, I think it's, mo it's very important that you keep the, that try and really be authentic. And as you say, like bring some of yourself, even if it then doesn't work out. <laughs> so uh, I'm very quickly going to touch on the fact that lean on was like a monumental part of your career. Yeah. Um, I checked today and on Spotify it's, it's over 1.5 billion streams now. Yeah. Just to put that into context, that's that's roughly twice the population of Europe. That's insane. Right? Yeah, I mean. That must just blow your mind. I know, it still does. I still don't fully understand. Like, <laughs> that was just but, so wild. <laughs> after things like that happen, and obviously you've had an, um, more than one huge hit, does, does, is that in the back of your mind when you're writing music, or do you try and keep that that kind of chasing success thing out of what you do? I think for in the years right after Lean On, it was definitely in the back of my mind, actually all the time almost. And I couldn't really help it. It was just there. Um, where, but it's funny uh, because now, like when writing this album, I haven't been thinking so much about it. Now it's more like just a thing that I'm really proud of and really amazed by how that all happened. But I think... You know, it's, I mean, again, I'm, I, I feel so lucky to have had that sort of success, but I, but again, I think, and don't get me wrong, I want to, of course, I, like, I, I hope to be successful, but I think it's really important that when writing music, you don't think about what, like, how good the numbers are going to be, or like, how successful you're going to be, but that you're trying to just focus on writing and doing the music that you think is really cool, uh, and that reflects what you want to say. Um, not that you shouldn't be smart about it and say, how can I make this better? You know, but, mm -hmm. but like, I think having, having, having this, this kind of bar of like where it needs to sit, like I think can be a bit confusing to the process of yeah. writing music. I was assuming that you were going to say something like that, but it must yeah. be hard yeah. to kind of remove that from you from the back of your mind at, it, it really was for, for the first like for the i mean four years after lean on it was was difficult and sometimes even still it can be like well no i i don't it's like now it's so far away and now as i said i now i'm just actually proud of it and yeah i mean it's wild <laughs> yeah yeah it is wild. so you've obviously collaborated with some big artists over the time but there aren't any collaborations particularly like there aren't any features on this album no but i know that you've you've written some of the songs with your friends yeah so those artists that have kind of brought you to the attention of a new fan base mm. you you have quite a mixed discography yeah. is there one song that you would want people discovering you to listen to first that you've made out of the songs on motodrome or just generally just in general, I guess. Just one song that kind of sums up what you're about. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Shit. That's a difficult question. I mean, right now I'm so in the motodrome world. So I guess I would say, I mean, maybe I would say, shit. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm like so lost. I think maybe I would say, listen to kind. No. no. We'll spin. <laughs> we'll spin maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, an, that's a, an interesting choice. And are there any new artists that you're excited about that you want to you want to tell people about that maybe they haven't heard? Because obviously, some a lot of people found you through other artists, so this is your yeah. chance to kind of do the same for for people you love. I mean, I'm. I guess people already know this artist because I guess she isn't really new anymore. But like, I, I personally am just so obsessed with Girl in Red. Like, I listen to her music all the time. So. 
she will probably be the one that I would be like, if you haven't heard her music, go and listen. It is amazing. So you're about to finally get back on, on a stage. Yeah. Um, how, how is the rest of 2022 looking for you now? I mean, this next half year, as you say, like, uh, I mean, it's a lot about touring and uh, get going back on the road. Um, and I'm just so excited for it. I'm like, I'm, I'm nervous, of course, because it's been a while and like, you know, you know, I know it'll take a little time to really get into the routine of things, but, but I'm so excited for it because I really playing live. is just one of the, the, one of the things that I love the most about my, my career. Cause when playing music live, I, I feel like that's when I'm the most kind of like free. Uh, and also I, I really think that's when my songs, especially when it, with a new album like this, that's when, when I really like when they come alive truly and like to see people react to the songs live, it's just, it's like everything. So, so that I'm really excited for. Uh, and then, I'm, I mean, I'll probably be making some new music as well. I always write. So, yeah. Yeah. But right now, all I can think about is like album release and tour and then we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So th- th- how do you feel in the last few days just before the album drops? I mean, I'm probably just going to be like, uh, kind of like very confused and like not really, not really reachable, you know, like on a spiritual level, just like kind of like, uh, and like, I can feel I'm already like that. It's like, uh, 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 you know, but. Um, Especially after the last couple of years, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It just feels a bit surreal to be putting out an album, but it, uh, uh, but at the same time, it also feels like the right thing, you know? So yeah, I'm just. I am having a lot of emotions about it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, it seems like you're in a really good place, which is great to know. And I yeah. have to say, I love the album. I love the way oh, it I'm flows so as well. I love how the tracks are sequenced. Um, it's it's a really, that. really good journey. I really enjoyed listening to it. So Thank I you wish so you much. all the best for 2022 and good luck with the album. I'm sure it's going to do do really well. And I have to I say, so I think you are ready for the century. <laughs> I hope I am too. <laughs> well, enjoy it and thanks very much for your time, Karen. Yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day. Okay, you too. <laughs>